Hello friends, and welcome to the channel. This is Stormhaven Gaming, I'm John, and this is The Pale Beyond. So this is a, a new one, came out at the end of uh, February, so it's only been out a week or so um, at time of recording. It's, uh, I, I get strong um, Frostpunk vibes from it, not just because of the setting, but in terms of some of the gameplay as well. I, I have played a little bit, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, it, it also comes up in, in Steam as being similar to Satisfactory and Foundation. So there's certain sort of building and survival elements as well. Okay, so if I, as I say, I have played on for a little bit. If we go into the continue here, we can see there is a save tree. So if I start a new expedition here, which we're going to do, different decisions will take us different ways on this save which is interesting. So, start a new expedition. This is the setup. We get to kind of select the way the branch is going to go. So, oh, the air bees cold, a flake and white, as a sailor begs their pledge. Uh, and then we choose the option that we want. To the ice they'll pray that leads reveal, uh, leads our ways through uh, pack ice. Uh, out in the ice they'll stake a claim, okay, that in the dark they'll brace themselves. Um, well, let's say that we can find a way through the ice. To the ice they'll pray that leads reveal some charted course ahead. Okay, of homes they'll dream, to the souls around, of glory found. Ooh, homes, the souls around, let, let, let's do the souls around. To the souls around them, shielding fear, dividing up their dread. A hunger draws the desperate here. It's one that can't be fed, such lonely souls need lead. It's calling souls dispread. Hmm. And, and the only one that seems decent is, is this one. Well, let, let's go for the, it's one that can't be fed. Uh, it's one that can't be fed. What will you do when steel hearts break and courage does abscond? I wonder if beyond will be the rhyme here. Uh, I'll lead these so souls, so help the gods. I'll do what must be done indeed, or I'll learn to live a life out here. Um, I'll lead these souls, so help the gods. Out of the pale beyond. There you go. Oh, and we have a, what looks like a wrecked ship there. Begin our journey. Let's begin our journey. Crew wanted. Able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. Glory to be had in the event of success. Address, Overleaf. You're alone in the office. Indeed, indeed we are. Uh, the tea in your hand has long since gone cold. Well, why didn't I drink it? Speaking of which, I will have a sip of tea now. It's perfectly adequate. It's perfectly adequate. Looking around the room, you make out a collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome, uh, a metronome ticks away steadily. It's harmless, it's insufferable, I find it rather calming. It's harmless. A simple reminder of the time you spent waiting. It stops. Well, that's not ominous at all. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Take a seat or remain standing. I'll remain standing, I think. Um, this looks like a an interview of some description. In fact, I know it is because I've already played this bit. Uh, the door behind you swings open. The captain bounds past you to the other side of the desk. Do you have all of your teeth? What? Uh, I've enough to get by. Open mouth. Um, I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm, I'm, I've enough to get by. Can never be too careful. The captain sits down. It's the little things you can lose people to. Uh, are you speaking from experience? I've not had scurvy before. Or you're late. That seems a little aggressive. Uh, I've not had scurvy before, if that's what you're asking. There's more things to worry about than just scurvy. How many people have died under your supervision? Um... None? 
as far as I'm aware. Meaning you're either perfect for the job, a liar, or you've never been in command. Which is it? Uh, if I was a liar, would I be in this room? The latter, I don't appreciate this line of question, uh, questioning. Uh, if I was a liar, that doesn't answer anything, so let's say that. If I was a liar, would I be in this room? Hmm. Please take a seat. Uh, I'd rather stand. Of course, this won't take long. Ah, you light up your pipe there, sir. Nothing like a bit of rough shag. I'm Captain Hunt. Uh, Shaw, the pleasure is mine. Robin Shaw. Okay, so my name is Robin Shaw. Uh, on your desk, which ship is that? Let's, let's at least introduce ourselves. The pleasure is mine. Robin Shaw. He nods. Um, which ship is that? What's the job then? Wait for him to continue. Let's wait for him to continue. Uh, I hope you weren't waiting too long. It's fine. Is this a waste of my time? I'm told it's worth the wait. Um, uh, a bit aggressive. A bit passag. Let's. I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. Okay, that seemed to please him. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. I'll keep listening. All seems a bit convoluted for a sailing job. The advert said there was glory to be had. Um, am I a glory hound? Um, that seems like an intelligent response. Hmm, let's go for that one. It all seems a bit convoluted for a sailing job. I'm not in the habit of trumpeting my work to every would-be sailor on the street. I need to know if you're right for the job first. Fair enough. He looks down at his list of questions. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? Okay, so land-born from the city, salt-born, the ocean. Mixed, if I knew I'd tell you, I've been all over. Um, let's go mixed. I, I, I genuinely don't know what these do. I think they might op open up different um, dialogue options and things like that. But let's go mixed. Mutt wash. Nice. If I knew I'd tell you I've been all over, but I'm here now. Ah, a mutt wash. Plenty of those joining. Myself included. Ooh, a wink. Military experience. Uh, colonial, Royal Admiralty. Mm. Merchant, sailed the merchant lines 12 years. Criminal, only evading them. Yeah. <laughs> Criminal, only evading them. Ah! Honesty is good. So you've skirted the law before then. Uh, is that a problem? That's behind me. Is this honest work? Is this honest work? I just told you, honesty is good and this is good work. Have you ever fired a weapon? Um, yes. Have you ever killed a man directly or otherwise? Um, let's go with no. You're not married, are you? Um, is that relevant? Uh, no, let's, let's say no, because we are going to see for a long time. That That's actually quite a, a sensible question. Of course not. You better not have a death wish. One must believe they'll return to justify leaving in the first place. Oh. Wise words, Captain Hunt. Wise words. Any less and you're doing yourself a disservice. Months of darkness. Low wages. Slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Uh, quite the opposite. It's why I'm here. Good work is hard to come by these days. It's to be expected, surely. It's to be expected, surely. I thought it blunt, but it's proven remarkable at weeding out the weak and the pretend. Um, so where are we headed? Can you get to the point? Let him continue. Ooh, dramatic chord. We're here to find the ship in that bottle. The Viscount. Heard of it? Um, no, enlighten me. He clears his throat. 
Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the Dead Peninsula. I mean, if you're going to call it the Dead Peninsula, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? They were trying to find and study the Absolute Magnetic South. Okay. Did they? Uh, presumably not. If they found out, I might have heard of them. Viscount, strange name for a ship. Yeah. Viscount, strange name for a ship. They can't all be named for dukes and princes. Viscount wasn't always hereditary. It was an earned title once. Admirals certainly love their metaphors. Almost as much as their medals. He trails off. Anyway, the point is, she never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost to the ice. Okay, five years is a bit late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead. Fair. This is beginning to sound like a suicide mission. Bit pessimistic. And we're supposed to be chasing this ship. Um, let's go with that one. Five years is a bit late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead. Alive or not, their research is supposedly of extreme importance. Aha! Okay, you have my attention. The captain smiles. Here's what we do know. Not one person or thing has been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. Uh, until now, we're chasing ghosts then, they're definitely all dead. Let's assume that something's come forward. Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on that ship. Uh, can I speak to them? Where are they now? They're probably lying. Um, can I speak to them? No, they're dead. Okay, unfortunate. But their testimony seems to have outlived them. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will. And, well... My judge of character's gotten me this far. Okay. So, what of our crew? What of our ship? Who's financing all this? What of our crew? Quite the mix. A work in progress. Joy. Some I've known for years. They get in on trusted experience. Others, well, they interview. Okay, you don't have a full crew already. Any impressed you? How large is this crew? Any impressed you? That remains to be seen. We do have transport, though. We'll be travelling on board the Temperance. She's a beauty. Greenwood. Generational. Not many like it left these days. The Viscount and the Temperance. They're sister ships. Oh, good. Okay. So they're sending the sister ship of the ship that disappeared to go and find... Okay. Built together... Sent out into this world to die alone. Uh, you seem to love metaphor yourself. What does that matter? Superstition gets people killed. Superstition gets people killed. So does cynicism. Yeah, fair. The captain looks at the bottled ship. So, what do you think? Uh, it's worth it if there's a chance anyone's alive. Sounds like you'll need all the help you can get. It's not that much to go on. Sounds like you'll need all the help you can get. We will. The captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. The captain stands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. Okay, uh, don't you need more information? You're not what I expected, or so I have the job. I mean, I think, yeah, I have the job. I think that's fair. Uh, you're not what I expected. Don't you need more information? Don't you need more information? Not if I'm a captain worth his salt. I work with people, not professions. I'd sooner trust a good carpenter than a cruel sailor to save me from drowning. But alas, I'll see you on the temperance. The captain makes his way to the door, and you follow. You arrive at the docks. Oops. A, year, a month to the day. Before you lies a ship. The letters on its side read Temperance. Uh, approach the Temperance. Okay. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man. 
overseeing the loading of cargo. Speak to the man. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. Yeah. He's unable to place you. Ah, okay. May I have your name? Uh, I'm Robin Shaw. Oh, of course. That would make you the captain's choice for first mate, correct? Captain's choice? I think, yeah, I mean, I am the first mate, not the captain's choice for first mate. Mate. I'm Mr. Templeton. All right, Templeton. I shall be operating as the chief science officer on this expedition. Okay, so we have a science officer. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Ah, okay. Do, however, consider myself and my team at you and the captain's disposal. Uh, what did you specialise in? Mr. Templeton, I look forward to working together. I'm fairly certain we're all disposable. Again, quite cynical. Uh, what did you specialise in? Applied botany. Okay, we're going to the ice flow. Not much use for a botanist on the ice is there. That's reassuring. Uh, I look forward to working together. Let's be pleasant. I expect you to be up for the... Oh, all right, Templeton. Some of the layabouts Hunt hired are questionable at best. No doubt I didn't inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Yeah, and don't you forget it, Templeton. Though I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I've spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you will have to whip into shape. Punctuality. Schedule. A strict adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you to be the organised sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. Okay. I likely have more in common with the crew than I do yourself, Mr Templeton. I doubt there will be much issue. You speak like you're in charge. Hmm. We'll keep that to ourselves for the moment, I think. Um, that sets us up as a bit too... Uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, that's a bit aggressive. I don't like that. I doubt there will be much issue. We can only hope. But your role is more strenuous than it would first seem. Let me know when you're ready to depart. The less valuable time we waste here, the better. Okay, so, what have we got here? Uh, the city? You'll be gone for quite a while. It will be some time before you see the city again. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, a young man. A young man stands at the ramp, steeling himself for the journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. Okay, and the temperance. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate. Oh yeah, look at that. Bit of kind of uh, Danish Nordic influence there, maybe. Uh, and with a whacking great steam chimney on it as well. Presumably that's a refit. Uh, near identical to the Viscount, barring some modern additions, yeah. Presumably that will be that. Okay. And presumably we want to go there. Set sail. And off we go. Week one. One week on the Temperance. Ooh, pretty. Uh, this is as far as I've played. So I, I have no idea what to expect from this point on. Uh, it's been a month. Uh, hunger, oh, that's our poem at the start. So, first make sure personal log. It's been one month since I signed on, and one week since we've set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told, told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere before they turn colder. Okay, so it's getting warmer. Uh, the Temperance. I've never been on a ship like this before. She's magnificent. It's seaworthy. It's an abomination. Um, she's magnificent. A technical marvel. Elegant machinery expertly weaved through one of the fastest hardwood ships of its day. Reborn for this mission. Breathing again with life. She's simply magnificent. Um, who's paying for this? 
I can't help but wonder who's footing the bull f uh, bill for all this. Certainly not the captain. Such exquisite modifications to the ship mustn't have come cheap. Uh, it's none of my business, or I should investigate further. Well, yeah, we're going to investigate further, clearly. Uh, as for its master, he's mostly kept to his quarters so far. Uh, I trust the captain. I'm not sure what to make of our leader. I need to know if I can trust Captain Hunt. Um... I, I got to say, I kind of like Captain Hunt, but I need to know if I can trust him. Uh, he's impulsive. He's not telling the whole truth. I've heard the rumours. Ooh, have I? What rumours? Uh, I've heard the rumours. Drinking, desertion. There's probably a good reason he's dressed in antiques. Okay. Perhaps I'm too quick to judge. I mustn't let my guard down. Despite that, I find myself warming to the man. Yeah, I do. He seems nice. Uh, as for the rest of the crew, uh, there are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice to pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sledding dogs. Uh, the crew are a strange lot. I've sailed with worse. They smell terrible. I've sailed with worse. And I'm sure there are those who might have considered myself in that same light. Fair enough. Okay, one of Hunt's sailors approaches. Joe, Captain wants you at the helm. Uh, good, I want to see him. I'll head there now. What for? Um, good, I want to see him. <clears throat> he leaves. Oh, okay. Okay, ooh, Crow's Nest currently stands unoccupied. The scouting team are expected to join at next port. Okay. Uh, the forecastle. The forecastle door appears to be locked. Okay. Uh, captain's cabin, that's presumably locked as well. Uh, join Hunt at the helm. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin. Lovely day for it, isn't it? Uh, it is indeed, Captain. One of your lackeys summoned me. Don't you have a helmsman to do that for you? Um, it is indeed, Captain. Indeed. It stays like these. I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He winks. Uh, why? Too old to stomach a storm or let him continue? Let's ask why. Let's humour him. Can't afford to go rusty in my old age. Never know when you're going to have to get your hands dirty. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Here, why don't you have a try? <laughs> you should take advantage of calm waters for once. I imagine you didn't see many in your past line of work. Okay. So, obviously, my criminal background um, affecting the uh, dialogue there. Uh, are you sure? Yes, this is important. Okay. I'll take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. Uh, okay, use right mouse button to pan around. Okay. The memory in your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. There, you have it. The captain pats you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Ah, there we go. So we can zoom in and out. I assume that will be useful. Oh, we can zoom in quite close as well. Hello, Captain. Peaceful, isn't it? Panning and zooming speeds can be adjusted in the settings menu. Uh, thank you, Captain. That's a strange thing for you to say, but, but thank you nonetheless. Uh, he takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. Okay, yes, I can go into the captain's quarters now. Ooh, what have you got? What's on the desk? On the desk you may make out a variety of papers, notes and maps, as well as a sealed letter with a stamp you don't recognise. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. Okay. A classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. Uh, a note to an old folk story known to all Captain Seamus. Uh, or was it Hamish? 
Okay. A tub. A pristine furnished tub securely uh, secured to the floor. A luxury to be had on the ice. Okay, that's all I can look at. So, take requests. What's this, then? You take a seat at the end of the room. The captain joins you. Yes, hello. Hello, captain. I do quite like this art style. That's very, very cool. Very kind of character sketch. I like it. Now, let's run through our provisions before taking requests. Okay. Oh, hello. To start, there's 23 souls signed onto this expedition, ourselves included. That's 16 free to be assigned to tasks if they aren't already busy. The rest are deployed to their permanent stations. Okay. Okay. You're only able to deploy crew who you have discovered. They must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post. Okay. We'll be picking up the scouting crew at next port. The lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. Right, this is presumably our morale meter, is it? Uh, the expedition will end, tearing itself apart if you end the week with no decorum left. Okay. We've enough provisions for at least six months in case of emergency. That... That doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. Okay. If you cannot afford the minimum food rations at the end of a week, crew will become malnourished. Unless cured, the malnourished status will develop into scurvy, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of a week. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, and more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. Okay. Colder temperatures will increase the min uh, minimum fuel required at the end of a re week. If you cannot afford that minimum fuel, crew will become freezing. Unless cured, the freezing status will develop into frostbite, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of a week. Okay. The sledding dogs. Well, there's still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Sending hunts out further requires a greater amount of dogs. They will rest and become available between the weeks. Okay. Now, on to work. Oh, okay. What have we got? Corvid and Cordell. Cordell has a puppy. We'll see Cordell first. Hello, Cordell. Hello, Cordell's puppy. Have you agreed upon my conditions? To the point, eh? Sure, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell is here to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the nearest island. But, dot dot dot, you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have good faith in this expedition. All right, Saki. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel. It's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest. Ooh. And never before has a seller made such strong demands. Okay. So, Lady Cordell. Uh, what exactly are these demands? You already sold the dogs, did you not? You have no control over them now. Um, Lady Cordell? A moniker given to me by locals of the city. On account of her vernacular. I find it odd that you seem to have researched me as, you, as much as you have my kennel. I'd like to know who I'm negotiating with. Regardless, sure. She demands we allow her to come along on the expedition, as a member of the crew. Now none of this ship have the experience and familiarity with these dogs that I possess. If you are taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. Bringing on another member of the crew is a risk, but our hands may be tied. Your thoughts? Um, I don't see the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. We should cancel the deal. We can find another buyer. Uh, if you're so adamant, we accept your offer. Um, I mean, she's absolutely right. She's the expert. Yeah, bring her on board. I don't see the harm in having an expert on the sled dogs. A good point, sure. He turns to her. 
This deal is already to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management and ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to haul them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Yes. I No, I agree absolutely with her. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Don't expect the crew to waste time taking care of your mutts, then. I hope you are as experienced as you claim, Cordell. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, your knowledge should prove valuable. <coughs> Invaluable. Nice. I'll have a room prepared for you below deck. Uh, so we've increased our maximum crew. No need. You'll find me in the forecastle with dogs. Okay. Fair enough. I hope I'm not making a mistake, Shaw. Alright, Corvid, what do you want? A sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had. The captain studies them further. You know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you did you know that before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir. Ha! How old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true. I can pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jib boom from your bowsprit? Bowsprit, sorry. I do, I learned it all from me da. Your da? Uh Smurf. Okay, Smurf, that's Smurf, is it? Papa Smurf. He's Ward's son. Follow him on board back in the city. Okay, so we've got someone on board called Ward, have we? What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, sure. Hunt eyes you up. Your first mate, what should we do with him? Right, keep them on board. Kick him off. Or pass the buck back to the captain. Um. I mean, we're bound to head somewhere bad. If, we, if he stays on board, he's going to die. I'll keep them on board. Why not? Another pair of hands. Hunt squints. Why? You need all the help you can get. This young man wants the help. He's clearly here because his father is. It would be wrong to separate them again. Uh, we don't have time to accommodate this. If the boy wants to freeze to death, let him. Uh, need all the help you can get. All right, boy, consider yourself part of the crew. Be sure to keep your nose clean and follow orders. I will, thank you, sir. Captain, not sir. Aye, Captain. The stowaway joins the two sailors below deck, now a member of the crew. Well, it seems the litter has a new runt. I hope the rest won't mind sharing their rations. What of their father? Uh, what of the father? Uh, simple, split their pay and their rations. Any rations the boy takes should come from his. That's a bit harsh. Uh, I doubt he intended for this to happen. We'll keep an eye on them both. Um, yeah, keep an eye on them both. <clears throat> I suppose you're right. Well, that matter's sorted. Finish the requests. Now that that's all set and settled, I'll have one more errand for you to run. Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them to meet me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, red hair, you couldn't mistake them for another. Uh, urgent matters, Stoke brothers, who are they? Do you require me for this meeting? Um, do you require me for this meeting? Let's be professional. No, no, this isn't a matter the first officer need concern themselves with. Alright, keep your secrets. They'll be down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with more of the crew. Okay, but I think we'll leave it there for this episode before we sort of get into the meat of it, really. I, I, I'm i enjoying this. It's interesting. The, the way it's presented, again, is very sort of frostpunk with the uh, sort of moral dilemmas and the, the decisions to make. Uh, let's actually go up on deck. Let's see what we've got. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we are just sailing through. So, yeah, we'll leave it there. I, I, I like the art style. 
um, I guess we'll see how the story develops. The captain's being a bit secretive, perhaps. There's something going on there. Obviously, disaster is going to strike at some point. It's bound to. Um, but yeah, we'll see how everything works next episode. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, please do give us a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it and you want to see more. Uh, please leave us any comments down below. Uh, and please join us next time. Until then, I've been John. This has been The Pale Beyond. Please do take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And bye-bye.